Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're going to talk about Microsoft Forms and Microsoft Power Apps Happy Together. Now, this is a continuation of the previous video I did, where it was a pretty advanced Microsoft Form and how I was able to rebuild that into a Power Apps Canvas app. Now we'll take that one step further. That Microsoft Form will place that as your front end form, say on your company website, but the data that is inputted over there will be stored on an internal data source such as a SharePoint list and will attach that list to it, the Microsoft Canvas form so we can further go ahead and manipulate that such as adding or editing it. So that's the plan, stick around. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now I want to give a quick review of this form that we've already built in the previous video. And this is a fairly advanced Microsoft form because I've gone and I've done some branching, I've used sections, and I've also put some rules in it. So all said and done, if you can see, this form actually has three pages. And then based on which I select, it will go ahead and take us to the different pages and we complete uh, filling the form by submitting it. Now this form information is taken and thanks to a Power Automate flow, saves it into a SharePoint list. But I want to spend some time taking a look at that list as well. So we go to the SharePoint list and here is my list. In fact, this is the same list on which we've gone and built a Power Apps form, which I have advanced, but I'll show you that in a few minutes. Now in this form, I mean in this list, I want to show you the backend settings. So I go to the list, I go to the list settings, and I want to do a little comparison because that's very important for Power Automate to work well to maintain this consistency. Now, the, the list columns are simple. It's got the single line of text, it's got these out of the box modified ones and so on and so forth. But what I want you to focus on right now is one thing is the date of birth and it's a date and time column, but we also have these choice type columns. So if I go and now take a look at this marital status, for example, you can see that I had these choices, single line of text, I mean, single, married, divorced, widowed, and other. Let's go and take a look at that from the Microsoft form. Now, if I go to the Microsoft form, I can see these options, marital status, single, married, divorce, widow, other. The key, key thing you want to take away from this comparison is that they are the exact same type. The spellings are the same. I even go down and maintain the consistency of the upper and lower case because I just want to make sure there's 100% consistency. What you don't need to be consistent is the order. Like the single can be all the way to the bottom, married could be all the way to the top. That's completely fine because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you selected it, in which order. What it cares about is what you have selected and if the same one shows up on the data source side, which is a SharePoint list. So keep that in mind. The key, key thing over here is that you maintain the consistency in the choices between the form and the SharePoint list. When it comes to the flow, you don't have to do any other customization. What you selected for the form automatically goes and saves it in the SharePoint list. So now kind of do you understand how this is so important to maintain that consistency? Good. So now let's go and take a look at the flow. The flow is actually really simple. In fact, there is already a template available for Microsoft Forms where whatever you've selected in the form will go and save it to a data source. So I've kind of done that and just tweaked it a bit. So I go to the edit form and here it is. The trigger is when a new response is submitted. It says form ID, but it's not looking for any GUID or any ID type format. It's just looking for that form name. So make sure that you go and select the correct form. After that, when you go ahead and say the get responses, it actually automatically puts that into the list of responses. And there we go and take that response and submit it into a SharePoint list. Now over here, I want to go and take a look at the choice type column. So right now that marital status, which is the choice type column we just looked at, I'm, I'm going to go and delete this one, X out of it. Because when you're uh, um, adding that entry over here using the Power Automate form, if I were to come here blank, it's actually letting me select one. So it's telling me you got to go and select one. But at the bottom, it gives you this enter custom value. So when I sit down, select the enter custom value, this is where the dynamic content comes in. And all I have to do is select marital um, status. And then marital status, I select it, it sits over here, no conditions, no additional expressions. That is why it's very important that you maintain that consistency. I cannot emphasize more on that, that the choices you see in the, um, in the uh, Microsoft Forms needs to be consistent in the SharePoint list. And honestly, it's as simple as that. Even the quit date, the date column, it's the consistent one. The date is there in the Microsoft Forms, date is there in the SharePoint list. And all I have to do is just select it this way and the data easily transfers over. 
Now I have these other three little column types. It's the status value, it's the primary position and the notes. These are the additional things or the actions we will do in the Microsoft Power Apps form site. So we'll take a look at that in just a minute. But kind of do you understand how this is? It's, it's a very simple flow. Take the entry when an entry is added in the form, submit it in the SharePoint list. All you have to do is use the dynamic values of the form and you are good. Cool. So now that you've seen the three things, which is the form, the SharePoint list, and then the flow, let's go and do an entry and we'll see how the data flows over. So I'm going to go and put in a patient name. I'm going to do some copying and pasting so we can move a little fast. The patient name is going to be Ann Lacey. The street name is going to be 123 uh, Main Street Boulevard. Um, city is going to be Redmond. Uh, the state is going to be Washington. I'm going to put that as VA. And I'm going to make sure that I just got the zip code, which is 12345. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and put an email address. The email address is going to be ann.lacy at contoso.com. Date of birth. Let's go and pick a date of birth. We will go ahead and select. Um, Say Lacey is born in the 1990s. So yeah, we'll select uh, 1990. Awesome. I will keep the, you know, uh, the date actually as is over here. Everything is good. Uh, married, emergency contact. We'll go ahead and put that as James Lacey. Occupation of Anne. She is a um, head of technology. What else we got? Um, ethnic group, we'll go ahead and put that as Native Hawaiian. I intentionally selected Native Hawaiian because there's two uh, letters over here, actually two words. I wanna see how well it does for that flow to just make sure it selects it into the SharePoint list. Does it actually work even though it's two words or letters? Let's go test. So I'll click on the next. It says, oh, I got one question which needs to be completed. What did I miss? Going up, oh, phone number, awesome. So I like, like that how that form works over here. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. I think we're in good shape. Go to next. Allergies, seasonal allergies, medication, off the counter, meds, health concerns, just allergies. Go next. And then uh, recreational, never. Does anyone in the households uh, use tobacco? No. Alcohol, no. Recreational drugs, no. And I think we are done. So now I've clicked on submit. A new entry has come in through Microsoft Forms, which means I should have a flow triggered. So I'm coming into my Power Automate flow. I'll go and click on reset, refresh. 11 seconds ago, a new one came in. 11 seconds is actually the one that we just submitted. All right. So I'll go back to our SharePoint list, go to the settings, go over here. And there you go. And Lacey's information came in. But let's let's go take a look at this okay so i'm going to scroll a little bit to the right awesome the address came through phone number came through date of birth came through because even though we selected a date we used a date type control in the form and we had a date column in sharepoint it just comes through hey look at that even the choice type which we had from the selection of the microsoft forms there was a radio button over there in the in the sharepoint list it's a choice type column but it still came through and voila, the ethnic group, I intentionally selected a two letter word, which is native Hawaiian, but because it's consistent, the choices in the SharePoint list is consistent. It just comes through, like no expressions or conditions were needed. It is just conditioned and it works really well. So as you can see, it's working really well and we successfully were able to now take that information from the form using Power Automated, save it to our SharePoint list. So now let's spend the next few minutes talking about how we've had to advance or enhance the Power Automate's Canvas form. So I'm gonna go into my Power Apps and here you go. It's a very simple app, which we had actually talked about in the previous one. I showed you how I made it, but I've gone ahead and enhanced it. So let's, let's talk about the enhancement. So I'm gonna actually come in now and over here, you can see the initial screen is just two buttons. I still have the full flexibility to go ahead and submit another form over here. It is still the exact same thing, but I also have the flexibility to go ahead and view the existing items that are coming in. So let's go and see if Anne's data shows up over here. So I go to view and as you can see, I do have the gallery. I've enhanced it just a little bit because now users need to come in and you know figure out what the patient status is. I've also gone and put in some search functionality. It's search based on the first name. So if I go and do John or start typing in John, only John's name shows up. If I start typing in Anne, Anne's name shows up, pretty simple. But here's the thing. I've gone ahead and classified that based on new and processed. Processed means this is the patient who's, you know, we've already gone ahead and taken the brand new form that came in from the um, Microsoft forms. 
but we've gone and processed the information about this patient's already come in and we've already gone and done some lab work, stuff like that. The, the patient has been processed. We know the patient. That's what it means. But let's take a look at Anne, Anne's situation. All right, so I'm now going to go ahead and process Anne because right now Anne is still a new patient. So we'll come in and we'll show you what this customized one is. These are all edit forms and the edit form also very well picks up all this information because as you can see, we got the date of birth, we went ahead and picked up the marital status. See, all of this is just working so well thanks to the edit forms as well. So now I go ahead and just gonna go to this information over here and this is where I can go ahead and do this additional work. By the way, I, I enhanced the uh, form a little bit. So in this case, the, if the alcohol is no, then it won't show you any, anything else. Alcohol is yes, this thing comes up. It's basically using a very simple if condition. All right, so I'm gonna leave it as is. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and now search for the, the, the um, um, physician's name. So I know the physician's name is James Glenn. I'll go and select that. And then that's actually, not, say that the, the hospital staff is doing this and the hospital staff goes and puts in this first information, say, you know, we put in a date and um, the thing says, um, patient information has been processed. We'll do lab work on the first appointment, all right? This all looks good. I'll go and click on submit. It ticked to the same thank you page, which only lasts away for a few seconds and takes us back now to an, um, the home page. One thing we did not do, and I intentionally did it because to show that, hey, we are still back in this new patient screen, you know, filtering over here. So I go back and it can show you that it's actually all the way to the end. I come back in and here it is. Status is still at new patient. I should actually go and change that as processed. And now I'll keep the notes as is, click on submit, and it takes me back to the thank you, will redirect me back to that screen. And as you can see, Anne doesn't show up over here. Anne shows up in the process. Well, let's go and see what all magic is happening behind the scenes over here. So the first thing is I just wanna talk about is, actually let's go one step further, is this screen. Over here, I've gone ahead and now selected what are the form types that we're gonna use. Basically, the, I mean, let me rephrase that. The form type is still gonna be an edit form, but what is the purpose of that form? Are you adding new data, which is a new patient information, or are you gonna view an existing one? For defining that, I'm using a variable, I'm, um, I'm using a variable using the var form, and I'm setting it as a global variable using the set function. And for the var form, if it's a new patient, because I'm selecting the new one over here in this button, then it'll be new. I've assigned a new text value. Now, in the next screen, you'll actually see that I'm gonna also go and assign a edit one for editing an existing patient. So that's the key thing here. If I've selected new, it's just basically going to go to the edit form and in the edit form, that's where we're gonna submit that as a new patient. So let's do that quickly. I'll come in, I'll click on the new button and as you can see, it's the same form, but it is blank. What's helping do that is now that variable. We even clicked on that button, the moment we clicked on it, the value new was assigned to this variable and because of that, only the default values are gonna be shown. However, if this was going to be for an existing patient, then it would just show what was the patient that was selected. So let's go and see that piece, all right? I will now go to our view screen. View screen is where we go and see our patients. And it could be anything. It could be a new patient, it could be a process patient. The magic happens in this pencil icon because on the select, on select of this pencil icon, it is now setting that value of that variable to edit, telling me that, hey, I'm going ahead and editing this selected value then it goes in and helps me navigate to that edit screen. So when I now go to that edit screen over here, all of those forms get populated based on which value is selected from the gallery. So if I go back over here to the gallery, let's go to the um, you know processed one, let's go and see the Anne Lacy's. If I select now that pencil, remember it is going ahead and assigning that edit form. And because the form has the edit value, it will, go, I mean the variable has the edit value, it'll go ahead and have that populated. So as a quick recap, we were able to take the Microsoft Forms and use that as your front end form because it doesn't require any access authentication. With using Microsoft Flow, we were able to take that data and save it in the backend data source, which is SharePoint List. And we went and enhanced that Power Apps Canvas app to give it the flexibility to go ahead and add more nodes. And it just worked really well. Remember, the key takeaway over here is that the columns that you've used in Microsoft Forms need to match with the columns in the SharePoint list, specifically things such as the date and time and the choice type column and the choices that you use in the choice type column. 
And finally, this synergy between Microsoft Forms and Power Apps Canvas app works really well. So definitely go and apply it in your real world scenario as you see fit. Thanks for watching and keep using Power Apps, Power Automate and Microsoft Forms. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.